to work, if you were to get a notice that said you're fired or you're laid off, we can no longer, we can no longer keep you. Or you get served at your front door with some bad news. Maybe there's a divorce pending. Sometimes your knees could feel like they're just going to buckle or, or fear could set in. I'm talking about if you're spiritually naked. A cold sweat or a panic attack could strike you. You have to understand, again, I can't stress it enough, that God wouldn't tell us to put on the whole armor of God if we weren't going to have to do battle. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes, yes, yes. If we could take a moment, I know most of you have the King James Version. If we could just read that together. And as we purpose to put on the whole armor of God, that's Ephesians chapter 6, if I could wait a minute or two for you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 18. And as you're finding that again, I want to thank Pastor Pamela and Dr. RJ for the opportunity to come before you tonight. I don't take it lightly anytime I get to come before you, powerful women of God. I love you and God loves you and he wants you to know it's so important that we take time out in the morning and in the noonday or whenever you can all through your day to put on the armor of God. So let's read that out loud together. If you take your microphone off of mute and let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 18. Uh, yeah. Because everybody is on a little delay. And oh. We don't know how much is going to be. You're going to get some interesting sounds if we do that. So. Oh. Listen to you because otherwise it's oh. Yeah. Okay, well ladies, even though you're on mute, just read out loud. Let's read out loud together, even though you're on mute. Here we go. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. And that's what we're coming together tonight to do is to pray, to pray for each other, to pray for our community, our city, our world, the challenges we're up against. God commands us to pray for one another. So I just hope that this brief message has encouraged you to not take it lightly, the season that we're upon. The, the, as seasons change, just as seasons change in your life, seasons change in the spirit realm. You know, Jesus is coming back soon and we want to be ready. You know, it says we don't know the day nor the hour, but there is one thing you will know is the season. So please prepare your hearts and mind, prepare your children to be ready for when Jesus comes and put on the armor of God. You see, you might not can see with the natural eye what's going on because it's a spiritual warfare. Things are going on behind the scene that sometimes you don't even understand. And many times when you can't understand it and it just seems to be inexplainable, honey, that's the devil 
causing that child to act strange or peculiar. That's a demonic spirit that's caused that sickness to come upon you from out of the blue. The Bible says rebelliousness is even as a sin as witchcraft. So we've got to take authority over it. We've got to put on the armor of God. We've got to guard our hearts and our minds for what we see, for what we allow to come into our home, for what we allow to come into our room. We want to have our breastplate of righteousness, our sword of the spirit, our helmet of salvation. We want to plead the blood of Jesus. Why do we plead the blood of Jesus? Because the blood that Jesus shed for us, there's power in that blood. There's power. Those stripes that he received on his back for your healing, those 39 stripes, from those 39 stripes, every disease known in this world derives from those 39 stripes. He covered Amen. it all for you with those stripes, with the blood that he shed for you. There's power. Don't take lightly the blood that he shed. There's a song we sing, Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. How can red blood take filthy sin and make it white as snow? That's power because there's power in the blood. There's power to save you. There's power to heal you. There's power to deliver you. There's power to set you free. But you've got to know who you are in Christ and put on the armor of God and do spiritual warfare. Get on your knees and begin to pray. We can't let ourselves get tired. We say, Lord, how long? How long before I see the answer? The word says, don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, if you don't get weary, if you don't faint, you're going to reap a harvest. Don't get weary, women. Don't get weary, man of God. If there's a man on the line, listen, don't get weary in doing God's will. Don't get weary. Don't say, I'm frustrated. It just seems like nothing's happening. No, keep praying. Keep fighting. There's a scripture that says, I would have fainted unless I had seen, unless I believed that I'd see the goodness of the Lord. That's in Psalms, in the land of the living. Land of the living. I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't, don't give, give up. up. And don't give in to the devil and his and his deceits and to his trickery. Because God has given you what you need to do battle. But put it on. Put it on. We take time to put makeup on or whatever our clothes. But take time to put on that armor of God. To prepare your heart and your mind for the day. Before you leave the home to go to your place of work or to take your child to school. Take time to say, Lord, I put on my armor today. I have, the, I have faith. I have my shield of faith. So when the devil tries to come against me and say, oh, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. No, you have your shield of faith. The word of God says, and it, 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 it retracts. It, it, those darts, they just bounce off. I will not die, but live. And I will declare the works of the Lord. I want to encourage you to do spiritual warfare. Pray in the spirit. If there's anybody that's here that's not filled with the Holy Spirit and you've already asked Jesus into your heart, I want to say a prayer with you right now so that you can have that power, so that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that you can be effective in what you do. The word says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, woman, boy, or girl availeth much effectual. Sexual. That means it's red hot. It's on fire. It has a passion behind it. It's sincere. It's from your heart. It's with your whole being. It's not, oh, God bless us today. No. God, I'm believing for a miracle today. Get adamant about it. Let the devil know you're not welcome here. You don't have authority here. Amen. Effective. Do spiritual warfare by praying in the spirit, covering your home, covering your marriage, covering your singleness, covering your children, whether you see them or not. I Every day, every day I'm going out the door or wherever I'm at, I plead the blood of Jesus over Abraham, Solomon, Isaac, Sarobi. I even yeah. plead the blood of Jesus over the animals I have in my house. I want them to be kept safe. Amen. Let's Amen. pray together, ladies. Heavenly Father, we just ask you tonight to just touch every woman's heart, 
her mind, her emotions. Align them up with your word. As we said, we're not to entertain fear. You want us to have a well balance, a calm mind and self-control. So I ask you, Father, that woman that might be struggling with some kind of mental disorder or a spirit of confusion, I bind that spirit of confusion right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, devil, to take your hands off. I ask you, Father God, to, for those that need saving, that they would simply say with me right now, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins and oh, come into yes, my yes, heart. Yes, yes. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again for me. And I want to serve you. Help me to serve you. I repent in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those that might not have been filled with the Holy Spirit, I ask you, Father God, to fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ladies, you can just begin to lift your hands, whether your face is on camera or not, in the privacy of your room, in the privacy of your home. Lift your hands and say, Heavenly Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to rule and reign and reside in my home. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. He's my teacher. He's my guide. He's my counselor. He gives me the power to live out this life for you, Lord. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to touch the ladies right now. Fill the room. Give them the evidence of speaking in tongues so that they can pray. The word says we don't even sometimes know how to pray as we ought, but we pray in the spirit with groanings and, 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 and a yearning that, that words just simply can't suffice to do, but it's a direct hotline to God. If you have your prayer language, just begin to pray in the spirit for a moment. Can we? I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Fill your women up to the with the Holy Spirit so they have the power to live for you. So they can put on the armor of God. So they can be spiritually dressed for warfare to do battle because you wouldn't have told us to put on the armor of God if we weren't going to have to battle. So I ask it and I believe it to be done in the precious, miraculous, powerful name of Jesus. As I close with you ladies, I want to say this right now. Jesus break every fetter. Jesus break Jesus breaks every fetter and he sets you free. So whatever that fetter might be in your life, whatever that chain, whatever that bondage, whatever that addiction, that sickness, that burden, that fear that you've been struggling against. We command it to be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. And he sets you free. Amen. You're free tonight. I love you. God bless you. Amen.